Hi, welcome to most of you that we in the first session. I think we won short, but that's fine. Maybe somebody takes longer to smoke than others. Um, to continue where we left off, um, everybody is after the first session today at this point reasonably okay with what a key account is. Thumbs up for that. Right. If you understand what a key account is, then key account management is not going to be difficult. It means that um, realizing the importance of that customer to your business and what you are prepared within your um, capabilities um, to be able to offer that key account um, customer to keep them happy because you realize the importance of their contribution to um, not just the survival but also the growth in your business. Now traditionally in sales there have been two different types of um, and this chapter and why it's so important that we understand what a key account um, um, is or key account customer or key customer is, is that the next chapter when we're doing relationship um, management, it ties in very closely with what we're doing in, in chapter nine um, with key accounts. It's a relationship based approach to sales. Remember, we the, the, the module is sales, sales and operations. So throughout the theme, it still remains sales and selling and you being the seller. You, a salesperson, a sales manager, a sales consultant representing your business and the products that they offer. That's always the starting point throughout this module. If anything, if you're not sure where how a question is structured, it will always be done from the angle that I've just um, that I've just shared with you. You having the sales cap on and what your responsibilities in sales, in managing a relationship with your customers that you are selling to, and in keeping that customer satisfied, all those activities combined. That's that's always the angle, the starting point for anything in this module. So traditionally, sales have been done slightly different or traditional selling and key account selling or key account management referred to if we use those um, five criteria that has been identified um, on the image on your screen or in the image on your screen. Um, Traditionally, the objective is to make a sale. With key account management, it is to ensure that you become the preferred supplier that that key account customer wants to do business with. Traditionally, sales skills required, you asking the questions, you're handling the objective, you're going through the sales process, you are closing the sale. Key account management, slightly different, more relationship based. You're building trust because you know that this customer has high potential to become a huge contributor to your business. The nature of the relationship with traditional selling, it was almost as if it's conveyor belt. Boom, you go through the steps um, of the selling cycle. Um, you want to make the sale, you want to close the sale, you want to move on to the next one. Where with key account management, it requires a more of a long term relationship, a closer relationship, a more collaborative relationship. We are um, benefiting um, from each other's um, abilities. In traditional selling, the salesperson was there to close the sale. In Key account management, the salesperson would be a key account 
manager and would be managing the relationship. Usually with traditional selling, your sales force is a number of people who um, pick up the phone, who phone, who make appointments, who go see the customers, who makes the sales. Where in key account management, it involves almost everybody in the both the seller and the buyer businesses or organizations or companies. Um, it's almost as if um, they work together in all transactions, remembering that if your business grows, that you may have, and hopefully you do, have more than key account. You have more than one key account. That's where it becomes very intriguing, very complex. If you have more than one key account that you have to satisfy, and that's usually where you have um, where your business expands or your sales department expands to have more than one um, account manager or more than or a person who's only responsible for managing key accounts. You'll see that at the bottom of the screen, uh, there are two page references for this particular um, image. Table 9.1 in the 11th edition is on page 271. Uh, my apologies. That's 10 is before 11. Page 271 in the 10th edition, 236 in the 11th edition. Same table, same table number. Let's look at the advantages and the potential dangers of key account management from the seller's point of view as well as from the customer's point of view. In other words, from both the seller and the buyer's point of view. What are the advantages for key account management for the seller? That's you. We are putting ourselves as, when we refer to sellers, we refer to you being the business who are selling the product. Again, back to the start of the session, always for this module, put your sales cap on, you are the seller. And that's the angle that we approach every concept with. So for you, the seller, what's the advantages? You have a closer relationship with your customers. There's a better flow of your sales and your services because um, you know, I have somebody in charge that takes care of that particular customer. I know if I do that correctly and I repeat doing it correctly that I'm going to get um, the repeat business in high quantities. So higher sales obviously and then lower cost because you are working together. And in some cases you are reducing the duplication of functions that's being done by both you and the buyer. The dangers however is that Obviously, your profit margins are going to be slightly less with key accounts. Yes, the quantity of business that you do, it, you, it will still be hugely beneficial for you as a seller. But um, if you have two clients that each buy 5,000 rands worth of products, as opposed to 100 customers who buy 10 no, 100 brand of products. It's the same total, but the effort that goes into getting those customers, those key important customers, those two who will buy 5,000, means that there is some room for maybe discounts because of the quantities they buy. Maybe you'll wait longer for, for their payments because they are, um, are special customers. Um, not forgetting that, and somebody would then say, but what's, why would I go through the effort of getting a key customer if I have two key customers that's each going to produce 5,000 Rand of business for me every month? That means 10,000 Rand. If I have 100 customers that produce 100 Rand a month, then also 10,000 Rand. So it's the same quantity. It is, however, you are not just going to have two key accounts um, or two, uh, two key accounts. You're also going to have at least 50 
of the other 100 customers who only spend a thousand uh, 100 rand each so the total will be more but to reduce cost um, would be a, a huge benefit for you but there is a danger that you can actually um, that you can actually get caught up in special demands from the buyer and therefore you spend a lot of time on on, on them and you neglect some of your other customers um, which is the third danger that's um, listed there but um, in general you are going to sacrifice something but then on the other hand people the simple equation is 10% of a thousand is what? Simple question. Quickly, 10% of a thousand is? Hundred. <laughs> Thank you very much, Johanny. Uh, zero percent of 10,000 is what? Nothing. Exactly. So it is still worth a smaller percentage on a larger client is still better off than no percentage out of many customers. And the many customers are also going to be more problems. Right, now from the buyer's point of view, the person that is your key account, what's the benefit for that person for having you as the preferred supplier who's giving them all the attention in the world? It improves service without a doubt. Communication is better because we are. There's no um, pick up the phone. Okay, right. This person is not available, and you don't know who else to talk to at the company. No, there's a direct line. Or it's not. This person is busy, sir. Leave a message. I'll get back to you. Um, um, no, it's a straight line between the different departments of the two businesses. It's still coordinated by the key account manager, though. Um, it could mean that they get special terms. That's a huge advantage to them, obviously, because if they um, if they get better credit, um, better credit offers than um, the usual customer, they would benefit from it. And also, because of the special relationship, they can maybe sometimes ask for special treatment in the sense of customized um, um, customized items. You know what? Uh, we are going to place an order of 100,000 Rand of this particular product. Um, would it be possible if instead of the usual um, yellow pen um, that we actually have a little logo on it or that we actually have it a different color that represents our business? Small things, no major issues. But sometimes, yes, it, it allows you that flexibility um, of, of getting, because you're getting special treatment, to ask for a favor, and that favor would be to sometimes customize certain items from simple requests that you put into your supply. The danger is that um, you become very reliant. Remember, now we're putting our buyer's cap on. This this is what the key accounts are experiencing. The danger for them is that they can become too dependent on one supplier. Um, and it could also mean that they then become complacent towards the other suppliers that may not be directly on that same um, in that same field um, service you as the as the buyer, but they are still suppliers to your business, but you sort of neglect them, and that can be um, that can be a danger. Complacency on the customer side, missing opportunities. Yes, because you're so stuck in a rut that works for you. You're happy with the situation. I mean, you're not. There's, there's no. There's no problem. But um, it. It. Well, there are no problems. But um, it might mean that you are so um, that you've got your. Um, what's that word I'm looking for at the moment? Um, You've got your blinkers on and therefore you're too focused on, on, on that one um, supplier that gives you a um, five-star treatment um, that you miss out on opportunities. But then again, also, having said that and having, having identified it as a danger, when the relationship between uh, the seller and a key account customer 
buyer um, is sound and well established over a period of time, um, it would we can remove it from the danger list because um, we can remove it from the danger list because um, the two parties will be working so closely together that they will um, they will red flag the possible dangers for each other. Just to reiterate on <coughs> or to recap on the screen, uh, in the place of customers, you can also write buyer advantages of and dangers of a KM KAM key account management to buyers. Okay, we're talking about the buyer-seller relationship here, you being the seller. Now, when a business sits down and says, hmm, should um, Should we venture into um, appointing or restructuring our business so we can offer key account management to some of our important customers? What would be the boxes that we have to tick to make that decision? Now, firstly, if a small number of customers account for a high proportion of your sales, it's a yes then you would definitely consider key account management. The products and services you are providing is of a high quality. Um, it's of a great value to the buyer as well. It's usually a good indication and that's usually another yes box that you can tick. Key account management, if the product that you are offering is of high quality and of a high value to the buyer. If there are significant savings in your costs because of the closer relationship that you have with your buyer, because of that joint agreement that you've entered into, because of the joint um, functions, um, it's another box that you can tick with a yes. So key account management would definitely be um, a good choice if there could be a significant reduction in your costs. If the customers require customized products, it's usually also a very good opportunity because that means that you can diversify your own business by providing this item or items to the customer, to your special key account customer. Um, but because of that, and because you have now gone into customized production of a product that you never previously had in your range, that product become part of your range now and you can offer it in a modified manner to other customers. You're still obviously going to produce what your key account customer wants, but all of a sudden, let's say for instance, you were in the business of, um, of I'm just looking at my desk here, um, you're in the business of, um, of um, manufacturing pens. I've got a big pen here in front of me. I'm in the business of manufacturing these big pens. Now, all of a sudden, you realize, you know what? Um, because we're making a customized item for a customer comes to us, one of our key accounts come to us, and they say, you know what? You've been doing these for us for many years now. Would you be able to also do um, um, a pencil for us? Because then we don't have to get our pencils from the place that we're currently getting it. Um, because, I mean, it's, the molds are pretty much the same. If you decide that you want to do that, then you are um, manufacturing a customized product for that key, um, customer. But because you now have the pencils, you can also produce pencils in general. It doesn't have to be just for that client. It could be another item that you now add to your product range. If there's a serious competition in, <coughs> excuse me, in a particular industry, key account management is hugely valuable 
because it means that you have sort of cornered that market now. If you if you sign up a key account and they become your and you become their preferred supplier, that's a huge that's a huge blow to the competitors. It gives you a huge competitive advantage if you um, can sign a key account because they will then buy from you and they will buy large quantities from you and not your competitors. Those are all five um, potential indications that choosing to implement a key, key account management uh, philosophy into your business would be a good choice. Now, criteria for selecting key accounts. Large quantities of a product. There's no point in, 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 in treating a customer, um, providing a customer with special treatment and qualifying them as a key account if they are not going to um, put in large orders. They have to order large amounts of products from you to make it worth your while. Maybe sometimes the products <clears throat> um, have the potential um, for you to, um, to increase your sales and grow your market share. <coughs> it's very much, my apologies, it's very much linked to the first one. Large quantities usually result in you having um, increase in um, or growth in your, in your market share. If your customer, if the buyer that now becomes a key account or that you are considering to make a key account or special um, customer for you, if they are the type of business who are usually the early adopters who see opportunities and who are very innovative um, and um, creative and they are always the ones coming up with new ideas, that's a very good choice, um, a very good opportunity for you um, and a, a great criteria to use um, to choose um, a key account or choose a customer to uh, become a key account um, holder because um, they will always, because of their nature, remain creative and innovative and especially during times of um, uh, where the economy is slowing down and creativity specifically is required. Like we are experiencing currently with, with COVID, uh, businesses having to think out the box. If you have a customer that, um, that think out the box, it will benefit you greatly because you know that they are not going to because of a, um, a slowdown in the economy, going to drop you and say, "I'm sorry, we we can't we can't continue with this. We we cannot keep supporting you. We have to cut down." No, they would much rather think of a creative way of 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 um, of continuing to do business because that's in their nature. Um, accounts that provide high contribution to the supplier's profit, of course. It goes hand in hand with the first one. If there's large quantities, um, it will definitely contribute towards the all over profits of your business. And then obviously it would be a win-win for both. Um, similarly with the previous one, if you have a key account that is a um, that has a good reputation image and um, you are associated um, as their preferred supplier, then um, it's um, it's a huge spin-off on how other buyers see you as a supplier, and it might result in in more business from customers that you don't have. Right. Any salesperson cannot necessarily venture into this particular um, special sales 
and treatment um, of important customers. It's it's not for everybody. It it, it, it it's somebody that can um, that can multitask and somebody that actually has the ability to almost like a conductor of an orchestra get the best out of all the different sections of that orchestra. It's like a conductor of a choir. There are different people with different voices and they have different contributions that they can make to make the end product sound great. Now, the key account manager is that type of person. And it's not every salesperson becomes a key account manager. Very often mistakes that businesses have made is that because a particular salesperson have initially signed up a, a buyer that um, they serviced well over years and they established a good relationship with and now that particular buyer becomes a key account um, a special a customer that needs to be treated with, um, in, in, in especially because of the increased volumes of business that they have um, committed to do with you um, often they then continue with that individual and they promote that person to become the key account manager to service that particular client. Now, it might be that that customer or that salesperson um, had the ability and the skills to um, initially identify and grow that relationship with that customer, but by nature, the key account or key account management requires you to orchestrate and organize and coordinate a lot of functions. And that might not necessarily always be a strong suit of that person. It's not to say that it's not the case. I think the, the natural um, approach is to use that person because they have and they know the business that has now been elevated to a higher special client status, but it um, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, that particular individual has the skills to actually perform the function the way it should, because we are not talking here about one salesperson who now needs to um, service one customer. Um, it's one salesperson who now needs to manage everybody involved in the sales team and in other functions in the business that they are representing and coordinating those functions with or those activities with similar functions in the buyer's business. If you look at the illustration on the screen, it basically reflects what um, the traditional um, buying that we had done in the previous um, figure uh, previous illustration at the start of the session it's called a bow tie relationship um, a buyer seller relationship because right in the center there's one salesperson representing the sales company and there's a representative from the buying company you'll see that at the back end of both of those on the left hand side of the screen and the right hand side of the screen both the selling company and the buying company have similar departments but they're not in contact with each other it's the sales representative from the selling company and the representative from the buying company who are in contact with each other so whenever the decision is taken by <coughs> any of those two people in the middle of that bow tie the buyer or the seller they relate that to all those other parties involved before decision um, decision is taken and we'll see later on how it's so much different when we do key account management key account management organizes and encourages a multifunctional levels of interaction not just a salesperson talking to a buyer the challenges lie here that very often if we go back to the previous slide, very often those people on the right hand side and those people on the left hand side, marketing, engineering, operations, logistics, they 
are not necessarily equipped and ready to actually directly communicate and collaborate and work with the marketing people from the buying company. The seller's um, research and development um, department is not necessarily always keen and ready to work with the um, research and development department of the buying company. <coughs> and that's where the key account manager comes in. And that's why you'll see that once we have the similar illustration for key account management, um, that it will reflect something completely different. I'm going to skip one or two slides just to quickly get to that. There you can see that's key account management. We also refer to where the previous one is called the bow, bow tie for obvious reasons, because it's shaped like a bow tie. Yeah, it's shaped like a diamond. So your key account management or relationship refers to more sort of a diamond um, shape approach where, yes, there is a key account manager who coordinates everything, but the marketing guys, the engineering guys, the operations, logistics, research and development departments of both the buyer on the right hand side, um, on, on the right hand side and the seller on the left hand side um, are in contact with each other directly. So, at this point, quickly, just to summarize, what does a bow tie relationship image look like or refer to specifically? Anybody? Or what's the difference between a bow tie and a diamond? Um, shape or image relationship in selling. Anybody? If you go through your slides and then you give me feedback. If I say in key account management, the diamond or the key account, or if in relationship management, um, the diamond based relationship refers to what as opposed to the bow tie buy seller relationship what's the difference between the two one sentence answer anybody tick tock tick tock Anybody out there? Bowtie versus diamonds? We did it in the last five minutes. I want to know if you actually can recall it. Anything? Anybody? Nobody? Well, I'm not going to help you either. Um, I'm going to do that as homework then. Um, we'll kick off tomorrow morning. Well, no, tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock session tomorrow afternoon, because next week, first period on Monday, we will be looking at assignment and progress on assignment and challenges with assignment. 
So for tomorrow's session, look at the discussion on the screen. Van Skyk, Van Skyk for those who don't know, um, one of the suppliers um, for many years to Prestige previously and now to Stadio for textbooks, for the library, for the students. Sometimes um, once we've decided on the books, they go out and they make up the packages for each student and you can basically go to Van Skyk and just collect it. Um, is Van Skyk um, a key account um, or is Stadio a key account for Van Skyk? Let's discuss that tomorrow morning. And then also tomorrow morning, give me an indication what the difference is between, or tomorrow afternoon, sorry, two o'clock. Um, give me an indication of what the difference is between um, managing or what the relationship management means uh, when I refer to, and the difference between a diamond shape or a bow tie shape um, a relationship between buyers and sellers. Everybody got that? Okay, we'll get that off tomorrow morning as the um, start of the discussion. Prepare for us um, what you have on the screen. We'll discuss it tomorrow to see if we can, if you understand what a key account is. Um, what key accounts are about um, and what we've done in this session. Okay, for the rest of the afternoon, keep well, keep safe. Um, don't forget, occasionally enjoy yourself. I know that everybody's under a lot of stress um, and there's a high workload. Uh, it is tough, but we've reached September, people, and we're all still, yeah, we're all still good, although we feel sometimes as if we've been in a train wreck. Um, just hang in there. Um, we've almost finished with another week. And then, um, yeah, we've done week four. So stay safe, keep well, take care of yourselves. Uh, we'll chat again tomorrow at, uh, at two o'clock.